Today we're going to be doing 7.2, but we're going to do day two. Okay, so remember we've already looked at these cross sections. We looked at the computer simulation, and then we did a second example, and one was with respect to X, one was with respect to Y. And so what we're going to do today is do this last problem together. It says nine. It's really the fourth example. If that bothers you, change that to a four. And then we're going to look at at a little bit of stuff on the worksheet, which is tonight's homework. We're going to do a little bit of that together in class. Okay, so when you get a new problem, okay, the first thing you want to do is graph, right? Sometimes the graph is given to you. On your paper, does your graph look like mine or is it cut off? It's cut off. It's cut off. So why don't you look up here? This is the x axis, this is the y axis, and fix it. And mine's even cut off a little bit. All right, what we need to do is to take our equations and we need to put them on the curves. Okay, when you're graphing it, you label it. When it's given to you, you want to label it as well. So that's y equals 6, and this is y equals 2 square root of x. Okay, and then the y-axis. The y-axis is also known as the vertical line x equals 0. That may come into play later. All right, so this says find the area of R. All right, um, let's think about this. When we do area, we get to pick. Do we want to do this with respect to X or do we want to do it with respect to Y? You choose. Some problems is obviously one or the other, and some problems you could actually do it either way. Okay, and this is one of those problems. But which one do you think would be easier? given that this equation is y equals 2 square root of x. With respect to x. With respect to x, I think would be a little bit easier or more obvious. So remember when you're doing area with respect to x, this is left to right, top minus bottom, dx. So in our problem, okay, the left, this is the point 0, 0, so 0. What's this point up here? Okay, so it's something comma six. How can we find the x value? Yeah, we just set these two things equal to each other. You could also graph it and find the intersection. I'm going to kind of go through those calculator steps one more time on a different problem. Okay, um, I'm going to do the work right here, but then I'm going to erase it. If we did that, we would divide over the two and get three and then we'd square both sides and get 9. Okay, so this is the point 9 comma 6. So that's a 9. The top curve, y equals 6. 6 minus the bottom curve would be 2 root x, dx. And then we're going to use our calculator to solve that. You could integrate that by hand, and those of you that don't have a calculator, you are going to integrate it by hand because you got, don't got a choice. So integration, 6 minus 2, square root of x, comma x, comma 0, comma 9, close parentheses. Okay, and I got 18. Any questions about that? We're good to go. We could totally move on to part B if we wanted to. But what I would like to do is to kind of also do this problem um, with respect to Y. It's going to help us on part B anyway. Okay, because look at part B. See how part B says perpendicular to the Y axis? We have to do part B with respect to Y. With volume, you don't get a choice. They're going to tell you which one to do. So what I would like to do is just to go ahead and do the area with respect to Y, and then doing the volume with respect to Y should be pretty easy. Okay, so first off, the general format would be bottom to top, right minus left, D, Y. Everything's in terms of Y. So the lower bound is still zero, but what's the upper bound? Six. The Y value right there is six. Now, when it comes to right minus left, I'm not 
good to go here. I got to do a little bit of work. This equation isn't working for me. I need the equation to be x equals. Okay, so I'm going to have to say, I'm going to do kind of the work right here. So square root of x would be y over 2. So what would just x be? Y over 2 squared. Right. Or y squared over 4. So this is what I'm going to use for the right curve. I have to do that when I'm with respect to y. You have to change your equation if that's called for. Okay, so that's going to be y over 2 squared minus what's the left curve? x equals what? Zero. So I'm going to put minus zero there. We could definitely leave it off. That's not a problem at all. So I'm going to go ahead. I already know what the answer is going to be, but just to make sure we're all on the same page. I'm going to type in minus zero. We don't really need to. Oops. You can see I get the same answer which for area should happen. That won't happen with volume because if you do volume one way and then another way, it's actually a di totally different shape. Unless you're doing like a circle or something. When I try and plug it in, it says two you are using. That is a parenthesis issue. Like, did you have um, oh, two opens here? One for the integral and one for the y over 2? Um, like, right. <laughs> like, the whole too few arguments, that's probably you opened a parenthesis or didn't close one or something like that. Okay. okay, so we did that whole with respect to y so that it would kind of help us with part b. So we have a, re a solid. We have cross sections, we have perpendicular to the y axis, and those we have rectangles. Okay, the height is three times the length of its base. Write but do not evaluate in integral expressions. This is good. I don't even have to integrate, I just have to write the integral. Okay, so the difference between volume and area is what do you do with this thing right here? Okay, this thing that I'm circling. Not the actual integral, but what's inside the integral. What letter did we start calling that? S. S. Okay. And so if I'm going to go perpendicular to the y-axis, that's going to look like this. Okay. That's your S. In this problem, perpendicular to the y-axis, it is going to be right minus left. That's your S. Those two things are the same thing. So if I wanted to do volume, I'm still going to have the same bounds, 0 to 6. I'm still going to have this thing, but I'm going to do something with it, okay? For a square, it was easy. We just squared it. Rectangles are a little bit different. So if we're not sure what we need to do, then I'm going to over here draw a rectangle. Okay, the base of this rectangle, I'm going to darken it in is this thing right here. So in other words, if this was like shooting up out of the paper, that base, S, would be this. So what would the height be? Three times, Three times S. So picture not drawn to scale. Sorry. Should be taller and skinnier. So 3S. So what would the area then of this rectangle be? 3s squared. Okay, I need to actually put in what s equals, and s equals that y over 2 squared minus 0 squared. You're not always doing s squared on a rectangle. The reason it happened on this one is because it said, of what it said, the height is 3 times the length of its base. Okay, just to see if we're all on the same page. What shape would I be doing cross sections for if I took away that three? It would be square cross sections because that's S squared. 
Okay, what would I need to multiply by if I was doing semicircles? I need to take away the three, and then what would I need to multiply by? Pi over eight, and then equilateral triangles, root three over two. Okay? Oh yeah, root, sorry, I was, got distracted. Root is three over four. Is it all that in parentheses? Yes. Square then times three? Then times three, and then, Really, the three could go here, or the three could go here. That would, those two things mean the same. But you're squaring it, and then you're doing the integral in times three. Hopefully this is getting a little bit easier. Okay, now, I know you've all started and finished this homework, right? Yes. This is a sign on Monday. You're going to have a little bit of class time to do that. I'm going to start working on the worksheet now. If you feel like you really understand this and you got it, you may want to go grab a book and start working on this if you don't feel like you need any more notes. Okay, I'm going to work one more example though. Um, and I do suggest you work the book first. These three problems are very basic. Not easy. Okay, none of this I think is easy, but they're very basic. The worksheet sets it up a little bit. So that's why I signed the book work first so that you kind of understand it. Okay, I want you to turn the page and look at this worksheet. This is your, like, tonight's homework. Um, okay, look at this problem. What do you, I'm not going to work through this whole problem, but I want to say something. What does it look like you're with respect to right now? It looks like with respect to X. Could you do it with respect to Y if you needed to? You could. You could square both sides here and multiply by that three, and that's important because I want you to notice on the next two pieces, one of them is with respect to x and one's with respect to y. So it's similar to the problem I just did. Okay, we are going to work through um, question two, and we are definitely going to practice that calculator stuff. Okay, first thing on any problem is getting the graph down. That's really the hardest part, I think, is getting the graph. Okay, the line, that's easiest, so let's do that first. I know you could use your calculator for this, but the more you understand how to do without a calculator, the better off you are. And it just saves you time if you can do this quicker than typing it in. Okay, that's that equation. Natural log. Anybody remember something about natural log? Like a natural log of what? Is there anything we know how to take natural log of? One, one is what? Zero. Zero. So natural log of x goes through that point. Does anybody remember maybe an asymptote or anything? Or like the fact that we can only take natural log of positive numbers? Here's the deal. This is. This is where knowing your parent functions helps you out. That's what the graph of natural log of x looks like. Of course you could use your calculator to help you out. But you need to be comfortable with your parent functions. You really do. Okay. So the region that I am trying to find the area of in part A is all this right here, okay? This little tiny sliver. We already said we're going to do this with respect to x. I feel like we did anyway. Did we? Does it make sense that we're doing this with respect to x? Yeah? Okay, yeah. hang with me here. All right, that means if we're going to do area, I need to know the x value at the two intersections because that's my numbers on my integral. I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. Not because I just love knowing multiple ways. I'm going to show you how to do this on the graph on your calculator first because that is something that you should know how to do. I already have this typed in from my previous class. So I'm going to type in natural log of x and x minus 2. And some of you might have done this first because you were like, that's how you were going to do the graph. Even. Depends. All right, if you do like a zoom six, like F2 zoom standard, 
it's going to be all jumbled up right here. It's going to be very, we're like we're way too far out. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in. Y'all watch what I'm doing here. I know you're typing in. Look up here real quick. I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to make the center of the zoom in right in the middle of all that junk. Okay, so I want you to get your calculator screen looking like mine where you can see both intersection points. And if you don't have your calculator, then you're just going to kind of play along up here. Okay, have you ever had a time when you can't get your calculator to do what you want it to do, especially the graphing screen? So this is why I am going to, in a minute, show you a different way to do this. Okay, once you get where you can see both intersections, you're going to go to F5, intersection. Now, first curve, second curve, that's just an inner, inner, because we only have two curves. Lower bound. Okay, that means if I want to find this intersection over here, that means I got to go all the way to the left of that intersection. Press enter. Now it changes to upper bound. Go all the way to the right of that intersection and press enter. Which value am I concerned with, the X or the Y? X. This is with respect to X, so I only care about the X value. And that is not a pretty number. Okay, I'm going to go to my home screen. And see how that says XC? I'm going to go to home screen, and I'm going to type in X alpha C, and it's going to pop that number up. And I can store that number in for alpha A. You can store it in for whatever letter you want. I'm just going to store it in for A. I'm, XC, that's like a... This works on the old calculator as well, but most students don't know that. Like, if you're on a graph and you find an intersection... It temporarily stores it. Now we, it's temporary, so we got to store it into whatever letter we want. So I'm going to show that to you again with the other one. So F5, 5 for intersection. The first curve, second curve, just enter, enter. Lower bound, I can go ahead and press enter here because I am lower. I am to the left. And when it says upper bound, I got to move all the way to the right of that intersection. And again, it's going to give me two numbers, and XC is what I'm concerned with. That's the X value up here. And if I hit the home button, and, and if I go back up here and grab XC again, it's going to spit out the new XC, and I'm going to store that into alpha B. And if you don't want to do all this, that's fine. You can just write out the whole decimal every time if you wanted to do that. What you can't do is call that 3.14 or 1.158 because you lose accuracy if you round in the middle of the problem. Y'all know that. Store it from the graph. <coughs> How do we do it? Just once you, when if you're in your graph and you find the intersection. Your calculator automatically has stored that value temporarily into XC. So you just got to type X alpha C, and it'll give you that last number. You want to go ahead and store it into some other letter, because like I said, that's a temporary store. So I stored mine into A and B, because that made sense to me. But you could use any letters you want, okay? Mm -hmm. Isn't it easier just to set the two equations equal to each other? I love that you said that, because you're going right into the next thing. It's like 10 so, plus. And this problem, it is considerably easier to do this. On another problem, it is, you, we're not even going to be able to do this. I'll explain why. Okay, so what Kieran said was, isn't it easier just to solve where we set these two things equal to each other? I told you I was going to show you all two ways to do this. And I'm showing you two ways. Because sometimes one way doesn't work, okay? So if the graphing part isn't working for you, and I like the graphing because you're already graphing probably, and so finding the intersection isn't really that much of a step. So we got to type in, so y'all stay with me here. This is especially useful when you are doing problems that are with respect to Y. Because you don't graph those in the Y equals screen. Right? Like number two on the quiz. 
So if you do this, it's going to take, it's going to give you a warning, hey, more than one solution might exist, and it's going to give you the same two numbers, which you could then store or go, grow up and grab or whatever. The only time, the only reason I haven't shown you this first and only is because if one, let's say there are four intersections. Without looking at a graph, you don't really know which two numbers to pick. And the reason I'm saying two is because that's these numbers right here, right? You've got to figure out what are these two numbers. And on a trig problem, there are infinitely many. So this is why there's more than one way to do this. Okay, and really three because on a lot of problems, if you just graph it neatly, you figure them out right away. All right, so all that being said, that's how you figure out these values right here. And I'm rounding here, but I'm not going to round when I evaluate it. Okay, I need to do top minus bottom, so I'm going to do natural log of x minus the bottom curve, which is x minus 2 dx. And I'm going to type this in. So I'm going to go down here. So when I do this, I'm going to go alpha A, comma, alpha B. That prevents me from having to type out that long decimal. All okay, now I can round, because this is my answer, 1.949. Okay. Okay. So I want you guys to see something. The part that took a long time was the algebra. To actually do the integral, that really wasn't that bad. I know, algebra is the devil. I'm just kidding. Um, it's necessary. Evil. OK, so now we look at part B, and it says, for this solve, the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. Thank God that we're still with respect to x. If they switched it on us, that would be kind of difficult, but doable. Our squares. We like squares. Squares are the nice ones. So again, I'm going to put in this, but keep in mind that we have more values there. Remember, this thing right here is the s. Remember, area of a square is s squared. On the graph, it would look like this. That's your S. The so right minus left. So you have to put it an extra parenthesis in. You can't just square your answer. You have to square then integrate. Not the same. On your calculator, what I think is the easiest way to do this is to start at the back, right before the comma X, put in a parenthesis squared and then go to the front and open that parenthesis right after the integration symbol. So 1.545. Okay? So if you can do area, you can do volume. It's really not that much different. Okay, very difficult to visualize. That's what the extra credit project is going to help with. But not that difficult to do. If you can do A, you can do B, and you sure can do C, because the only difference about C is semicircles. Okay, what is the area of a semicircle again? Pi over 8. Pi over 8, S squared. So all i got to do is multiply by pi over 8. I don't have to reintegrate. Pi over 8 is just a number. So whether the number's inside, outside, that doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is just go pi over 8 times 1.545. Again, I'm not going to use the rounded number, though. Okay? I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to grab that, and I'm going to say times pi over 8. And then round my answer, 0 0.607. Bless you. Okay, you've got to be practicing the calculator. You've got to be practicing the graphing. I think we're getting better at the calculus. Oh my goodness. Okay, 
I'm done with the teaching, but I want to make sure, and I'm going to keep recording here. I want y'all to turn the page, and I want you to look at number four. Number four is a problem. If you see something like this, you know it's going to for sure be with respect to x. Because what if this was with respect to y? You wouldn't do that. And guess what? Neither would I. Okay? And so we know we're going to want to do with respect to x, and it makes sense that they tell us. They're not going to put problems on there where it's really difficult to do one way or the other. They're going to go with the way that works easiest or something that's comparable. Okay, and you turn the page, here's number five, and um, there you go. Okay, that's tonight's homework. That I 